Culture binds people together with shared values, beliefs, religion, and customs. It allows them to identify each other with a similar mindset. Cultural heritage created jointly can provide a common sense of unity and belonging within a group, allowing its members to better understand the previous generations and the common history with which they move towards a future to be built together. Since ancient time, Artsakh has always played an active part in the history of Armenia. It was in this province that King Tigran the Great of Armenia founded one of the four cities named after himself between 95 to 55 BC. Starting from the second half of the first century, different preachers of Christianity spread this religion in Armenia. Among them were Saint Tad and Saint Elisha, two of the 72 disciples of Christ, both of whom preached Christianity in Artsakh and later suffered martyrdom there. They are buried in the monasteries of Dadivank and Elisha the Apostle respectively, which both are situated in Artsakh. After Christianity was proclaimed as the state religion of Armenia in the 4th century on the order of King Tardar III, preachers were sent to different provinces of the country to preach the new religion. One of them, Saint Grigoris, carried out Christian preaching in Artsakh. He rests in Amaras Monastery of Artsakh. One of the most important factors in spreading the new religion was the construction of places of worship. Many churches were built throughout Armenia, including the Basilica of Tsitsernavank, Tikranakert, and Norhaikajur in Artsakh. In fact, at the end of the 4th century, most of the population of Armenia professed Christianity. In the following centuries, Artsakh was reigned by various powers, Armenian and non-Armenian but the region remained predominantly inhabited by Christian Armenians and architecture developed there according to the traditions of Armenian national architecture. Monasteries and churches continued to be built, the construction of religious monuments being particularly promoted when the region was part of an Armenian kingdom or principality. The church of Vankasar and Ohte Derne monastery have been preserved as magnificent monuments of the 7th century. Katosavank Monastery as well as the churches of Varazgum and Stunis can be mentioned among structures dating from the period between the 9th and 11th centuries. The art of construction particularly flourished in Artsakh between the 12th and 13th centuries, when the Artsakh School of Armenian Architecture was formed. As elsewhere in the country, the reigning feudal families were actively involved in construction activities, especially building monasteries the best known specimens of which include, but are not limited to, Dadivank, Kuchavank, Hakopavank, Khatravank, Horekavank, Kanzasar, and Yagishe Arakyal. It should be noted that the architecture and art of Artsakh develop in complete interconnection with the architecture and art of Central Armenia, these being marked by shared experience and achievements. The period between the 17th and 18th centuries marked another stage of flourishing in church building in Artsakh. Thanks to the existence of semi-independent Armenian principalities, the former rights of the representatives of several old Armenian princely families were restored and ratified under decrees issued by Safavid Shahs. Many churches preserved from this period show that the three-nave basilica was the main type in Artsakh, just as elsewhere in Armenia. In the second half of the 1720s, Artsakh suffered devastating incursions by the Ottoman armies, and due to the unprecedented prosecutions that followed in subsequent years, many Armenian inhabited districts of the region of Tsar, Kashata, Kashunik, Gosakan were almost completely depopulated. After Artsakh fell under Russian rule in 1805, the Tsarist authorities attempted to put an end to the nomadic lifestyle of the Caucasian Tatars by re-educating them and forcing them into a sedentary life. This process continued for several decades, lasting as late as in the 1910s. In the aftermath of these efforts, the ethnic composition of Tsar, Kashatag, Kashunik, Kovsakan regions of Artsakh completely changed. In the same time, under the rule of the Christian Russian Empire, church construction again revived in the region. Architecturally, Ghazan Chetot Surp Armena Perkish Church, built in 1868, to 1887 in Shushi is one of the most important monuments of the 19th century. All of the aforementioned monuments are rich in Armenian inscriptions, most of which contain important information from the point of view of Armenian and world history. Thus, 
For instance, a 13th century inscription commemorates the donation of an estate named Egater to Hakobavank Monastery on the order of Jalal I, the king of Artsakh. It is noteworthy that Egater given to the monastery on a royal order was considered its property in some land records even six centuries after the donation. This confirms the hereditary right of Artsakh Armenians handed down from the depth of centuries. Special mention should be made of the cross stones, Khachkars of Artsakh, which show a complete confessional identity to the entire Armenian Khachkar culture. In 2010, the Armenian Khachkar was inscribed on the representative list of the intangible cultural heritage of humanity. Moreover, the Armenian art of Khachkar making originated in Artsakh. It is no coincidence that throughout the Armenian environment, the first written proof about erecting a Khachkar has reached us from Metzaranit Surp Hakobavank Monastery of Artsakh. Also, it is in Vahuhas village of Artsakh that the oldest Khachkar has been preserved with an inscription reporting the exact date of its creation in 866. In our opinion, it is the aforementioned historical facts that annoyed the authorities of Azerbaijan and determined their policy of destroying the Armenian monuments of Artsakh. In this context, the war waged by Azerbaijan against the Artsakh people's right to self-determination is also a war against their culture, accompanied by cultural genocide. At the end of the 20th century, the Armenians of Artsakh who had struggled for centuries to live in liberty and preserve their ethnic identity finally succeeded in establishing in part of their historical homeland the Republic of Artsakh, Nagorno-Karabakh, which is de facto independent although unrecognized by the UN member states. The authorities of Azerbaijan, who could not reconcile themselves to the loss of Artsakh, started the widespread destruction of Armenian monuments, particularly Christian ones. There is substantial amount of evidence revealing the fact that during the period between 1994 and September 2020, the destruction of Armenian monuments, especially religious and funerary ones, was carried out with the state policy of Azerbaijan, in some cases with the involvement of the military forces of the country. Since 1991, several hundred Armenian churches and monasteries have been destroyed by the authorities of Azerbaijan. Hundreds of medieval cemeteries with thousands of cross stones and gravestones have been demolished. The historical Armenian inscriptions of many churches have been scraped off to present them as Caucasian Albanian monuments. It is important to note that even monuments situated far from active military zones have suffered serious damage or complete destruction. Based on these facts, the decision of the International Court of Justice was made on December 7, 2021. Some examples of the destroyed churches and monasteries are the Holy Mother of God Church of Baku, its Karvan Sarai, and three tier belfry of the 18th and 19th century. In the late 1990s, the municipal authorities of Baku completely destroyed the church as well as the second and third tiers of its belfry. The truncated belfry has been transformed to resemble a fire temple on the Apsharan Peninsula. Holy Mother of God Church, Khalaka, now Khanega Village, Ismaili District. The church after its destruction, probably explosion in the late 1990s. A Christian cemetery in Baku covering an area of around 60 hectares and containing thousands of gravestones of the 19th and 20th centuries. The cemetery was destroyed between 2004 and 2016, as revealed by a comparison of a 1976 map of the USSR General Military Headquarters with Google Earth photo dated 2006, 2008, and 2021. St. John Church Suluk, now Yenizod Village, the church after its destruction between 1989 and 2007. Holy Resurrection Church, Bakhshik, now Kamo Village, the church after its demolition in the late 1990s. St. John Church of Gonzak, now Genji City, renovated to be used as chamber music hall. And Armenian inscriptions commemorating the foundation of the church and the inscriptions after obliteration. St. 
St. Elia Church, middle quarter of Nij village. Before and after renovation, the tympanum of the southern entrance to the church with two Armenian inscriptions commemorating its complete reconstruction in the 1840s. During the renovation of St. Elia in the early 2000s, the inscriptions were obliterated to present the church as a Caucasian Albanian one. The church was renovated with the support of the Norwegian embassy in Azerbaijan, but the Norwegian ambassador to Azerbaijan, Steiner Gill, expressed regret for what had been done and described it as vandalism. The following is a post by Ambassador Steiner Gill. Azerbaijan's first deputy minister of culture, Anar Karimov, has produced a video of the St. Elia Church in Nish. This church was built in 1823 and belonged to the Albanian eparchy of the Armenian Apostolic Church. The church was restored in the beginning of this century with the financial assistance of the Norwegian humanitarian enterprise. In December 2004, before the restoration was finished, Armenian inscriptions on the tympanum and on tombstones outside the church were erased. The authorities were informed about the erasure of the inscriptions, but nobody has been brought to account for this vandalism. Regarding the destruction of the Armenian heritage, Special mention should be made of the monuments located in the Autonomous Republic of Nakhichevan. The centuries-old Christian Armenian heritage of this region has been completely destroyed during the last 25 years. This has been firmly stated in the resolution adopted by the European Parliament on March 10, 2022. St. George Church, City of Nakhichevan, a church marked on the map of the USSR General Military Headquarters its site after its complete destruction in the second half of the 1990s. St. Stepan Church, Upper Agulis, the church marked on the map of the USSR General Military Headquarters, its site after its annihilation in the late 1990s. Holy Forerunner Monastery, Upper Agulis Village, the site of the monastery after its destruction in the late 1990s. The monastery marked on the map of the USSR General Military Headquarters, its site after its complete destruction, and a mosque built in the same location. St. Jacob Monastery, Shorot Village, the site of the monastery after its destruction in the late 1990s. The monastery marked on the map of the USSR General Military Headquarters. St. Thomas the Apostle Monastery, Upper Agulis Village, the monastery marked on the map of the USSR General Military Headquarters. Its site after its complete destruction in the late 1990s and a mosque built in the same location. Unfortunately, the same policy of destroying Armenian monuments is being carried out in those territories of the unrecognized Artsakh Republic, which came under the control of Azerbaijan in the aftermath of the 44-day war of 2020. There is a significant amount of evidence confirming that the monuments built by the Armenians in the last 30 years are now being destroyed. Armenian inscriptions are being removed from the walls of churches in order to present them as Caucasian Albanian monuments. Several other churches have simply been blown up or desecrated. Numerous videos taken after September 2020 prove the annihilation of Armenian monuments. St. John Church in the city of Shushi, still standing intact on November 10, 2020 the day following the announcement of a ceasefire, with an Azerbaijani soldier standing nearby as seen in the photo. The church was not damaged during the war. The church a year after the ceasefire agreement, in a state of ruin, with an Azerbaijani soldier posing in front of it. Holy Mother of God Church of Jurakan, Jabrail City, before its destruction, in 2017 and afterwards, in 2021. The cemetery of Sirnach village, Askeran district, containing more than 30 tombstones and a few khachkars, the site of the cemetery in 2021. It was leveled to the ground with an estate policy of Azerbaijan under the pretext of building a road to Shushi. Two Google Earth photos published on February 15, 2021 and August 23, 2021. To justify the destruction of Armenian khachkars, cross stones, Anar Karimov, the Minister of Culture of Azerbaijan, falsely claimed that Armenians had placed fake khashkars everywhere to Armenianize monuments. He went so far as to present fake evidence to substantiate his allegation, but it proved to be just falsification of historical facts. On November 23, 
2020, Azerbaijan's Minister of Culture posted some images of Shahbulah Fortress in Ardam, claiming that it was subject to alternation, namely cross was installed in the wall during Armenian occupation. In order to prove the so-called alternation, the minister posted another photo showing a tower, allegedly that of Shahbulah Fortress, with a cross in its wall. However, even a casual examination reveals that this is just false propaganda as the photo with the cross shows not Chahpulak Fortress in Ardam, but another tower located in the Georgian city of Akhal which is about 600 kilometers away from the tower in Ardam. A similar Facebook post containing the same falsified information was also made by an Azerbaijani MP, Elnur Allahverdiev, being sent to all the embassies in Baku. The post was published on many websites being shared by thousands of Twitter and Facebook users with different comments in many languages. Various commentators repeated the fallacy that Armenians are trying to falsify history and Armenianize Shahpulakh fortress as well as entire Artsakh by attaching Khashkars to all the local monuments. To justify the policy of the destruction of Armenian church inscriptions, the president of Azerbaijan, Ilham Aliyev, declared on 16th of March 2021 that the 17th century construction inscription of the monastery of Tsakhkavank in Hadru district was fake and should be removed. It should be noted, however, that this inscription was published in various books and articles in the 19th century, decades before the foundation of the Republic of Azerbaijan. So how to stop this process? Thanks to Rafael Lemkin, a clear distinction was made between genocide and other atrocities under international law which led to the adoption of new international rules through the 1948 UN Genocide Convention to prevent this crime. Dr. Lemkin, could you give us a little background on how you came to be interested in this genocide? I became interested in genocide because it happened so many times. It happened to the Armenians and uh, after the Armenians, Hitler took action. These rules also help us distinguish between acts of vandalism and the systematic destruction of the cultural heritage of an entire nation. The bottom line is that it is an imperative to revive Lemkin's clear vision and suggestion made at the Conference for Unification of Criminal Law, Madrid in 1933, about the crime of the destruction of cultural and artistic works of racial, religious, or social collectives.